I have a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. Second. All in favor? My name is Bill Herman. I live on Pickles Road. I use the exit. I'm not going to do that. Turn it off. You turn it off. Just switch right there. My name is Bill Herman. I live on uh, Pickles Road, which is at the exit one uh, fifteen exit. Um, I, I don't know why all the PO zones are being looked at. I believe it came as a result of one application, probably on Woodsetton Road. But regardless, you want to look at them all. The proposed additional uses are all currently allowed, and although it's been said that no um, development has occurred at this time, it's occurred nowhere else in the town, so I, I, I'm not quite sure if it's because it's not being allowed there. It's just not used at the locations that would like to be used at. Um, I, live, I live in Bloomingburg. I have investment property in Bloomingburg, and I'm developing commercial and residential renovating commercial and residential in the village of, of uh, Wordsboro. And, uh, and so I have a large investment in this, um, in this town right there, fair amount of taxes. Um, while you're looking to amend 199.6, I'd like to back up to 199.2 of the, of the code, which says the purpose is hereby established a comprehensive zoning local law for the town of Mavicate. It says zone, zoning local law is adopted for the purposes specifically included the following. L, the protection and enhancement of the open scenic character of Route 209, not affected, and Route 17, definitely affected, and the deterrence of strip development along the community's major local, county, and state transportation corridors. E, the maximum protection of residential areas from the intrusion of incompatible uses, which is why we're here tonight. K, the enhancement of the appearance of the town of Mavicating as a whole and the protection of the rural character of the community. The rural character of the community is why I moved here in the first place and probably why a lot of people are staying here. And to be able to pull off a 115 and look at a bunch of gas stations and strip malls and, and Mr. Stoloff, I believe, uh, just said, uh, Wallkill, Newburgh, Goshen, and Montgomery. And I live traveling on the road. I'm a home inspector. I travel all over the, the, the Hudson Valley. Wallkill, Newburgh, Goshen, and Montgomery are one of the worst places I like to travel to. I really hope A115 doesn't look like Wallkill, Newburgh, Goshen, and Montgomery. Design guidelines for commercial industrial districts, 199.20, A, intent. The town of Mavicating wishes to protect its unique character, which is a combination of spectacular natural features, early building traditions, and its cultural heritage. That's not what we're trying to do here, guys. I, I really don't think this is going to Thank you. Thank you. I really want to talk to uh, ask more questions because I'm not familiar with all this uh, legal stuff here that uh, the descriptions that are going on. I live on Birmingham Road, or directly across from Whispering Pines. It's a beautiful area with trees and everything else, and my concern is that. I'm not sure I understand whether this involves closing exit 115 so that we have to go out <coughs> to 116 and come all through yeah, the village. No, no, it doesn't. It does not. It does not. So 115 will remain open. And, and just so you know, any exits, we don't have any control over any exits. That would be the state of New York deal. Okay. The other thing is you said that this is supposed to be a large project that someone wants to put in or something, but. Can we be told who the person is? There is no project proposal. There is no project proposal. And it's my understanding also that we have a master plan that was put in effect years ago that seems to be uh, make everybody happy. But this is, you know, this is getting other people upset because now we're going to have like a village a mile from another village. 
if this all goes through. And that's what my concern is. And that I, that I know as a, uh, as a retiree, moving up to the country was ideal from moving from Queens and from Brooklyn and traveling to the city to work. But the beautiful countryside was what we really all moved up here for. So, you know, I do. Uh, I just don't feel that this new plan should really be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom Lloyd. resided at 24 Burlingham Road for 35 years. My grandfather built the house in 1908 and we sleep in the bedroom where my dad was born. We're very happy there. We raised two marvelous daughters. I am a licensed blaster. I have a small magazine, a storage facility on my property. And on my property there is only one place to put that because there are specifications from the federal and state government that it be away from roads, houses, buildings, and so on. It is somewhat near one of the edges of my property. One of my concerns is that the former Gilbert property is next to me on the same side of the road. If that is developed and someone builds a structure that does not fall within the federal and state guidelines anymore as far as my magazine is concerned, I could be put out of business and uh, consequently uh, put out of my grandfather's home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jack Daly. Hi, folks. How you doing, sir? Good, good. I'm Jack Daly. I live in Bloomingburg. I've been there 37 years. I'm at the road. And I used to be on the planning board. And I worked many, many nights, long and hard, developing the master plan and helping everybody develop that master plan. And that plan took a lot of years and a lot of hard work. And I can't understand why everybody just wants to change it all of a sudden. When everybody agreed to it after four or five different big meetings, now they want to change the master plan to suit other people. And I don't think it's right, and I don't think it should happen. That's all I got to say. Uh, I believe it's a Richard J. Maybe Lynn. Okay. Uh, Holly Roach. Hi. Um, actually, I've been doing a little reading and zoning. There is supposed to be a plan, and I have not heard a plan for the zoning. Did anyone hear about a plan? Miss, no. Miss, you're, you're addressing oh, us. Plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mr. Rowe. Uh, Wayne Rowe owns property on Birmingham Road, and he wants to build a truck stop. Uh, and uh, so it sounds like that the zoning is looking to be changed for a single person, which to me sounds like something that happened a few years ago, where again, Mr. Rowe wanted to change the zoning, which would be annexation, got paid a million dollars by Mr. Lamb and Mr. Uh, Nakaden to do so. Um, and there's a lawsuit that's happened. It's in the Sullivan County Clerk's Office as we speak. Mr. Stoloff, do you represent, Mr. Stoloff, do you represent- you're, you're talking to the board. Do you represent Mr. Rowe in that lawsuit? He, he doesn't Okay. Uh, it's in the records in Sullivan County, okay? I believe it is a conflict of interest for someone who is representing um, 
someone who wants a zoning change. I, I don't think this is. Yeah. change now because obviously it's in somebody's interest. It's not right. Thank you. Uh, Bar Barbara CIN QUE? Uh, no. no, I signed them on paper. Okay. Uh, J5BU Somebody by that name? J5, it looks like. It looks like B, it could be B E Z O. Oh. Someone signed one of his feet. Okay. Uh, Christian? Christian Gressley, G R A E S S L E. Um, I simply wanted to ask the town for a day in the Yes, I wanted, to ask, um, I wanted to ask the town for a 30-day moratorium on the changes that have been brought before you uh, until we're able to gather some more information, which, as Colin mentioned, we're having a Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Um, I think you're running into a problem because a lot of people don't have the history here, but some of them are really getting the nail right on the head. Initially in 2010, when we were asked about this, this was to be an interchange altercation bill zone. And as time went on, it came to a PO zone change, which I don't wholly understand, yet, because it does do two things. The first thing it does is anything new that's being added is readily available in other zones in the town to change something because it's not available for one individual in the property that they own is wildly inappropriate. The second thing is, is, before you came into office, there was a master plan review committee, which was a substantial committee. I believe it was 13 people, which you disbanded immediately when you went into office. And it's, I don't wholly understand why that committee was folded, because this is exactly the kind of reason you have that committee. And it answers a lot of people in the public as to public involved. I mean, it was a hugely diverse committee. You sat on it, or Dean, you sat on it. Yeah, and that's the, the master review. The master plan review committee. Right, okay. Right, right. And so it wasn't one that developed the main plan, though. No. Okay. To, to not, yeah. I don't think, I had a discussion with a board member prior to this meeting, and I don't think there's one person on this board that can tell me why our zoning is structured like it is. And if you can't tell me that, I don't think you should be all the way. The other thing is, 
saying is, is if you want to be open to business by taking the pre-existing uses and making them require a special use permit, you're basically hanging up a close for business sign on our town. You're restricting what was pre-existing, and you're saying don't do this. So that you're making, basically what you're doing is you're taking, you're giving to the individual who asked for the original change for, change for the Burlingham Woods project, the intersection of Burlingham Road, Rusa Gap Road, and Route 17, asked for an interchange zone, and you're expanding that throughout and giving other people an advantage while you're taking away from others. And that's wildly inappropriate. That's not what you're doing. You're redistributing wealth by redistributing the worth of the land. It's not what you're supposed to do. I'd recommend that you adhere to what the objective is, and that's the good of the whole town, not just the few. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. occurred for some property in the village of Ellenville, Bloomingburg. Bloomingburg, excuse me, that what occurred was that one of the PO zones was split into two. So if you look on the map over there, the very small piece, it just got bisected because that was not annexed into the village of Bloomingburg. So originally that was a PO zone. It's not adding any PO zones to it. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, then my second question would be, when did the Winterton Road area become a PO zone? In 2001? 2001. And that change was made, what's the process for making that change? Because it, it was, before 2001, it was not a PO zone. The town did a, a town, I, I wasn't a town attorney then, but when it was adopted, the town did a town-wide zoning change. They had a master plan committee that mm -hmm. reviewed that. Um, they had a master plan committee at that time and the entire zoning was basically changed and re-adopted in 2001. And the, your basic zoning, if you looked at the zoning code, is from 2001, and there have been amendments from time to time to the zoning, mostly not to the zoning, but from time to time to that since 2001. And are those zoning changes done Arbitrarily, I mean, is, is there a hearing that takes place? Does like the property this. owners get to get to choose what whether they want to be in that zone or not? No property. No. 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 The zone. Okay. So, so my, my time, please. I, 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 I you've answered my question. Thank you. You've answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. No. I, I, oh, okay. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't start in at five. Started at three. Okay. So I guess my question would be then. So it really doesn't matter what anybody here says. You don't need our permission to adopt these changes. Is that a true statement? That is a true statement. Thank but you. But you're here. We're here to listen to you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if anybody's been to the village of Bloomingburg, you've seen that piece of property behind, um, I'm going to say behind memory lane, the ice cream. You've seen that piece of property that's been abandoned, that was zoned or allowed by the village for commercial use. And you've seen what that piece of property has looked like. That's a village. You just said it, it was allowed by the village. Right. But you see what happens when you allow that type of, of thing to happen. Now, will the town consider taking back the property that was annexed to the village since we were told that that property was going to have 125 luxury homes and a golf course, and now it's going to be 400 townhouses. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My concern is, like everybody else, 
<laughs> with these things that goes on these changes. Some of it might be good, some of it may not be good. Right now, there's so much uncertainty in the village with the people that live in the town that even if you try to put forward something good, everybody is scared, everybody is shy because there's always an underlying meaning to everything that gets done. And we've seen that over the last couple of years and maybe it's not too late to reverse things, as he said, you know, the town donated property to Bloomingburg with the sense that luxury homes are going in, which everybody likes because it's their community. We have to pass that every day. We have to go through that every day. I don't see the benefit for us or, or people that are coming into town to do that. Changing that intersection, there might be underlying meetings that if this board just like this man said, it took years to come up with that plan. It should take years to unfold. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, I'd still like to see all of our development within our villages and make our, our, our villages thrive. Um, as you do know, promises can be broken. If somebody tells you they're going to build one thing, sometimes that doesn't happen. We need to stick to that master plan, uh, and we need to reinstitute a new master plan committee. Just 
Uh, just so everyone is aware, of what what we opposed, we actually added added a burden on on the contractor. And if uh, if someone chooses to anything that was that's in in there, uh, we can take it, anybody can take it to exit one sixteen and build there. Uh, and just so you're also aware, at exit 116, which is in the town of Oak Hill, so that we lose our, our tax base and our taxes go up, our school taxes go up. Uh, they can also put over there at exit 116. Uh, we, that's where the adult entertainment will be coming from the town of Oak Hill because that's where they chose to put it over there. So just be aware, everybody doesn't want it in our community, but. When you develop exit 116, everybody that's afraid of closing up the village of Bloomingburg, exit 116 can do the same thing as exit 115 could do. Uh, I, I'm trying to develop something so that uh, the taxes come here to Sullivan County, sales tax, property tax, school tax, county tax. That's what I'm looking to do. I'm not trying to, trying to change the culture of this town. Uh, I, I feel, uh, when you go right up to Thompson, they have things at their exit uh, that they're benefiting from, again, uh, on their tax base. If we can't get something to come to this town, we're all going to drown in, in debt, in taxes, okay? Uh, and uh, I'll, be, I'll be like the uh, supervisor up in, uh, up in New Falls. I'll be selling my house because I can't afford the taxes on my house. And uh, it's, it's Maryland, so, so that will, uh, town, town supervisor, sir. So I will, uh, will look at all, all, all your comments and, uh, and then we will bring it at, at the next meeting. Uh, but I, I want everyone to know my opinion. I really feel it's a good thing for us. Uh, otherwise, I really don't, don't know how we can attack the taxes. Uh, yes. I'm going to be out of order. Is it your opinion or is it Dwayne Rose's opinion? opinion? So uh, I, 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 we can work on that, but we'll have to take it. If you don't know who Dwayne Rowe is, he's the Enterprise. Oh, he's not. He's got 115. I wasn't finished. Oh, sorry. I thought you were finished. Um, yeah, we, need, we, we actually need to do an economic study for that area. And uh, Facebook okay. is a wonderful thing. There's already people out on Facebook who already <coughs> know that there are rights to purchase in those PO zones. So uh, just remember, we want to thank you. Everybody that came up and spoke, it was 11 to nothing. It looked like a shutout to me. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming out. I too agree with John and some of you. We have a master plan. I sat on the last master plan review committee. Um, I'm for change, but I don't see where this change is really beneficial. I had a business in the village of Bloomingburg, as most, most of you know, and it's hard enough to get those people to walk through your door as a business owner and to have that repeat business to come back. So. Um, I just don't see if you're going to have it so close to your exits, it's going to be harder for them to patronize your village businesses and other um, enterprises and tourism and stuff that, like that within the villages. So um, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Again, we'll review your comments. Please come out again on July 19th, 17th. 17th, I will say it's the 19th, and um, watch us vote. So, so we're making a report on July 5th. Okay, so, so the resolution, it was second to carry to the next meeting. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries.